You're listening to The Voluntary Life, where you can hear ideas for finding freedom in an unfree world. Visit thevoluntarylife.com to connect with the show and hear all past episodes. Here's your host, Jake. Hi, it's Jake here. Welcome to The Voluntary Life. I've had a lot of really nice feedback from listeners about the episodes that I've been putting out recently on the topic of minimalism. I know this is something that a lot of people are thinking about and applying or interested in applying in their own lives. So this week I'm going to talk about another aspect of minimalism. In particular, we're going to talk about clothes. I previously had loads of clothes, wardrobes full of clothes. And since Hannah and I have now moved to a travel-oriented lifestyle where we have one suitcase each for all of our physical possessions, I've got rid of a huge amount of clothes and I've changed my whole approach to clothes. Everything I now own in terms of physical possessions fits within one suitcase and clothes are an important part of that. A lot of the room in that suitcase is taken up by clothes, but I got rid of a huge amount as part of the process of extreme decluttering that I did prior to embracing a life of travel. I think downsizing clothes is one of the keys to living a more minimalist life. And it certainly was a big job for me and a big part of the process of decluttering. So in this episode, I'm going to tell you about my experience. And I hope that's going to be useful to you, whether or not you are planning to travel. You know, it's definitely essential if you want to move towards a travel lifestyle. But clothes also provide an opportunity for decluttering for everyone, regardless of whether you plan to do more travel. So here are some of the considerations that I thought about when I went through the process of decluttering when it comes to clothes. Firstly, clothes just take up a huge amount of space. As I said, I had wardrobes full of clothes. And given that we wanted to move towards a life of permanent travel, I had to get rid of a huge amount of clothes in order to make that possible and feasible. Because Hannah and I put our stuff in storage a couple of times for months on end when we would go traveling and then took it all out of storage. But we decided that we wanted to just get rid of that whole storage hassle and and really move to a life where we only carried those things with us that we needed. One of the quotes that I love is by Charles Warner, and it is, simplicity is making the journey of this life with just baggage enough. And that was our plan, was to basically get rid of everything that we didn't need for this journey and just carry just enough to get through our adventures in life. So that certainly meant getting rid of a lot of clothes. What I also found was that a lot of clothes that I had, I simply didn't really wear. I didn't really use them. My clothes definitely conformed to the 80-20 principle that less than 20% of my clothes I was wearing more more than 80% of the time. So a lot of clothes that I was storing, I just wasn't wearing and wasn't using. Stuff that I had bought without really thinking through whether they were useful or items of clothing that people had given me as presents that I didn't particularly like or just clothes that I had accumulated over the years without really being conscious about my spending that I wanted to get rid of because they were actually just taking up space and not really being used. Part of the process of simplifying and moving towards a minimalist lifestyle for me is also about removing distractions and minimizing the amount of decisions that I have to make. And clothes, frankly, are can be a big distraction. Clothing is a huge opportunity for getting caught up in status and in appearances. And I know that when I think about those kinds of things, it distracts me from the things that are really important to me in life. Clothes in the past have been for me a money sink, a place, a place for me to put a lot of discretionary spending, especially when I first started making money. Uh, after being broke for a long time, when I first became successful financially, I spent money on clothes because I kind of thought this was a way of enjoying my success or, or showing my success. And when I was doing that, it wasn't helping me live the best life that I can live. Clothes also can involve a lot of mental headspace in terms of decision fatigue. You know, I've already done an episode about removing trivial decisions from life. And I talked about Steve Jobs and uh, his approach to always wearing the same thing every day, which to me makes total sense because it's a way of removing trivial decisions from life. We all have limited amount of mental processing power that we can apply to all of the challenges that come up in our life. And the more mental processing that we devote to things like what clothes we're going to wear, the less we have available to other things. And for me, other things are more important. So I really wanted to move to a more simple approach to clothes in my life. And the three things that really helped me 
in doing this decluttering and getting rid of a lot of clothes were firstly just becoming conscious of what clothes I owned, in particular by doing an inventory. And I'm going to talk more about that. Secondly, by making some conscious decisions about what I needed in terms of clothes and what I didn't need. And then thirdly, by just selling the rest. So I'm going to go through and explain uh, everything that I did to owning a really simple set of clothes and getting rid of all of the clutter that I had in terms of clothes. Now, I do want to say up front that probably the biggest help for me in this was being able to get rid of all my business clothes after I sold my business. Business clothes are a great example of the expenses associated with some kinds of jobs or roles or careers that you don't think about just how expensive they are in advance. And they, they really are an important part of the lifestyle that goes with some jobs and the spending associated with some jobs. And because I was in consulting and also because I was building a company and eventually selling a company, I had a lot of business clothing. And one of the easiest ways for me to declutter a lot of my clothes was simply after selling my business, not needing a lot of suits and ties and shirts and so forth anymore. This is actually a huge benefit of selling your business or reaching early retirement or financial independence or even just moving to a more freelance oriented or online working lifestyle. If you don't need business clothes, you can get rid of a huge amount of clutter from your life. So that was one big advantage that I had after selling my business was I was able to just get rid of a lot of business clothes that I didn't need anymore. But even after doing that, I still had a lot more clothes than I could take with me traveling abroad and living an expat lifestyle. So the first step that I did in terms of decluttering my clothes was to just actually become conscious of what I owned in terms of clothes. I didn't know how many items I cl of clothing I had. I didn't know how many t-shirts I had. I didn't know how many pairs of socks or any of these other uh, categories of clothing. You know, I had a vague idea and I could tell when I seemed to be running low on, on one particular kind of clothing. But I didn't really have an overview of all the clothes that I owned. I just had a whole bunch of stuff in wardrobes and shelves and drawers. And when I decided to start systematically getting rid of possessions to prepare for travel, it was incredibly helpful to just take an inventory of everything that I had. I mean, it sounds really simple, but it, it really helped because only by seeing all the clothes that I had was I able to start making conscious decisions about whether or not I needed them and what I could get rid of. And the way that I did that was using an inventory app. And I've talked about this in, in some previous episodes. I'll put a link in the show notes to an episode called uh, A Fearless Inventory of Your Stuff, where I describe this process as well. But I used a, an app running on a Mac called Home Inventory, and it allowed me to put all my clothes into the application. It's like a database and you can store information like the purchase price and your estimated resale value and so forth. And immediately that allows you to run queries and see how many items of clothing you have in different categories. And you can split it by, for example, cold weather clothing, warm weather, and you can add tags and do anything you like. Also, you can sort by the value of different items of clothing that you have. And that is really helpful because it allows you to identify things that you're not wearing that have a high resale value. And, you know, those are the easy wins. You can get rid of those immediately. So that was step one, was just taking an inventory of everything that I had in terms of clothes. The second part of the process was deciding what I needed to keep and what I wanted to get rid of. And in a way, once I was more aware of what I owned, it was easier to become conscious of those clothes in my inventory that I just simply never wore. And that's the easiest first step is looking at what you don't wear. I was thinking about things that I hadn't worn within the last few months, and especially within the last six months. Anything that you haven't worn for that long is a good candidate for getting rid of. What I also did was to look at the kinds of environments and situations that we plan to spend time in and think about what clothes I would need for each of those environments. So for example, we do a lot of traveling to hot places. So hot weather clothes and clothes for the beach and those kinds of things. These are obvious situations where I need clothes for those situations. And then also, for example, we want to be able to visit people in cold weather places. So we've just been to New Hampshire where it's cold. So I wanted a set of clothes to be able to wear in cold weather places. And then there are other things like, you know, if we're going out, 
in an evening and I want to dress smartly, I have some clothes for that. So I looked at these different situations and looked at the sort of seasonal requirements and different situations. And any clothes that I had that didn't fit into any of those situations, again, were just good candidates for getting rid of. And for me, this was a real chance to keep quality instead of quantity. As I said in the beginning, there are a small subset of my clothes that I really like, and then a lot of clothes that I didn't really wear. So I wanted to keep the ones that I really like and get rid of all the ones that I don't really wear. Now I only have clothes that I really like, and I have a limited set of clothes. But that's actually fine because it also means that I don't have a lot of decisions to make about what clothes I'm going to wear. And I get to focus my time on other things that are more important to me. So once I decided on that set of clothes that would all fit in one suitcase, the third step in the process was just getting rid of everything else. And this is really just a process of selling stuff, giving it away and giving it to charity. I mostly used eBay to sell clothes. Um, I would use the eBay app to take pictures of clothes uh, because it's faster to upload from a phone into eBay. And also once I had all my clothes in an inventory app, I already had looked up the details of, you know, what each item was, the size and so forth. So that made it very quick for me to list these, these, uh, each item on eBay to sell. Some things I gave away, some other things I gave to charity. And it was a slow process. It took months of just devoting a little bit of time to listing stuff and then selling things in batches uh, on eBay to, to really get rid of a lot of those clothes. But once I had decided what I wanted to get rid of, it was, it was a straightforward process. It was kind of a big project, but it was totally straightforward. So I got down to having just this one suitcase with only the really high quality, nice clothes that I want to keep, and also only those clothes that fit the situations that I want to plan for. And if we end up going somewhere that I have not planned for, I can always buy clothes if I need to. I don't feel the need to be prepared for any situation because ultimately, if it's that important, I'll just buy more clothes. I think what we've done in terms of going down to one suitcase of possessions is pretty extreme. But there are some people who take an even more extreme approach to the travel-oriented lifestyle. And some people prefer to travel with not a suitcase, but just one carry-on bag. And that includes all of their clothes. I know some people have done this and in order to make that work, you really have to get creative about multifunctional clothes and have like items of clothing that you can use in loads of different circumstances. And there are some special travel clothes that you can get from that. I know that for women, there's a, a kind of dress that can be transformed into a skirt and also into a sort of sarong. And it's a special travel clothing item that you can use in loads of different ways. And for guys, there are... Um, trousers that you can wear in lots of different circumstances because they can they can look smart but they're also hard wearing and stuff i've never really been bothered about getting into that level of sort of extreme travel wear because the whole idea of trying to have only one item of hand baggage for travel seemed to hannah and i always just a, a little bit unnecessary because we're not really traveling every week or every month you know we spend at least six months in each place that we go to and so we're not getting that many flights and consequently having one suitcase in the hold uh, isn't a big deal so we didn't bother going that extreme and in some ways i think it would be for me a little bit more hassle than it's worth to try and survive on such a tiny amount of clothes i know that also that That lifestyle is much harder to do if you intend to go to hot and cold climates. A lot of digital nomads or long-term travelers or whatever you want to call them tend to stay in warm weather places. And that's easier if you want to travel with very few clothes because then you only need shorts and t-shirts and so forth. But as I said, we've gone for the one suitcase plan. And in this episode, I've tried to explain that whole process uh, of how I got there in terms of decluttering my clothes. I hope you find that useful and I hope it's food for thought. If you're planning to go traveling or even if you're just thinking about decluttering, clothes are a big aspect of physical clutter that you can think about in terms of lots of potential for simplifying life. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to check out my new book, Job Free, Four Ways to Quit the Rat Race and Achieve Financial Freedom on Your Terms. It's now available in paperback too. So you can find that on Amazon. I'll put a link in the show notes too. Thank you so much for listening. That's all for this week. I'll be back next week with another episode. In the meantime, I hope you have a great week. Thank you for listening to The Voluntary Life. 
If you have feedback about the show, please email jake at thevoluntarylife.com. If you enjoyed this program, please share the podcast with your friends or click the donate button on thevoluntarylife.com.